Uh, thanks very much, Senator Devine. Have I any other senators indicating they'd like to speak? I don't believe so. So on that basis, I'll ask Senator O'Donnell to conclude you have five minutes, Senator Devine. Uh, Las Carla, and because of the five minutes, I just want to take the opportunity to thank all of the members who have contributed to the debate and thank the Minister uh, for joining us uh, for this uh, important uh, discussion. I'm not going to be able to reflect uh, all of the contributions, but I do welcome the fact that it has been uh, so broad and so comprehensive, and that it has been very personal uh, in many instances uh, for people, given the nature of it. Um, I, I suppose it's, it's equally personal uh, for, for me. I'm not an immigrant. Um, I uh, live in Ireland's second city. Uh, and I'm glad, uh, Minister, that you acknowledge the unique and special uh, role or status that exists uh, for the North, the north uh, in this regard. Because if people think they have been waiting a long time from the Constitutional Convention uh, and its recommendation, then we have been waiting even longer, uh, given that the, the Good Friday Agreement 18 years ago uh, conferred as a birthright Irish citizenship onto people uh, like me. So that's not partial citizenship. That's not second-class citizenship. That's full Irish citizenship. And I should be entitled to the same rights uh, and qualifications as everyone else uh, in Ireland uh, in that regard. Minister, I, I, I'm sorry you missed the, my opening remarks because I was very conscious that I didn't want this to be a divisive issue. I didn't want to go back and forward. And, and I respect you being here and respect uh, your contribution. But of course, I'm going to take issue with some of what you have said. Um, you did say, in terms of your opening remarks, that you wanted to do this. You were committed to, do, to, to doing this, and that uh, is what you were going to do. You then tell us that you can't support the motion because it's too definitive in asking simply for it to be done. Um, all we are asking for is a time frame. All we are asking for is that you will make a commitment as Minister that says, I will not allow this to go beyond Acts date because equality and rights and entitlements to Irish citizens shouldn't have to wait. They shouldn't have to be prolonged. They shouldn't have to be kicked down the can. And no one is denying, Minister, that there are logistical um, uh, problems that arise for your department and for you and for your officials. And we appreciate that. And actually, what we want to try and do is to light a fire uh, under this uh, issue and to light a fire under people's, uh, I suppose, negligence in, in, in relation uh, to this uh, matter thus far. I want to, Minister, while you're here, uh, refer back to something that I read uh, into the record of my earlier contribution from uh, former Minister for the Diaspora, uh, Jimmy Deenan. However, against this, and now that the conversation has begun, a decision by the government not to take forward the recommendation of the Constitutional Convention would have a disproportionately negative effect. This is in a letter to the Taoiseach. The issue of voting rights is of enormous importance to many Irish citizens uh, abroad. If I spend much of that time defending a government decision not to respond positively to the recommendation of the Constitutional Convention, I will be working with one hand tied behind my back. In terms of diaspora policy, it is my strong view that it would be seen as a major step forward to put this issue to a referendum. So much like former Minister uh, Dina indicated to the Taoiseach, merely what we are asking is to give people their say, give people uh, their say. They had their say in relation to the Good Friday Agreement, and they voted overwhelmingly in favour to recognise our rights and our entitlements as fellow uh, Irish citizens uh, in that regard. Uh, Minister, uh, as I said, I'm not going to reflect back on, on everything uh, that, that, that has been said, and I mean, I, I, I took heart from, from much of what uh, uh, fellow senators said. We have had in the past issues around the Constitutional Convention. Actually, the leader of the Senate a few weeks ago when I raised this matter told me that, that's not binding. We don't actually have to do anything. That's just a recommendation. I don't know on any other issue that politicians in this state would take such a definitive approach to a recommendation, such a broad uh, recommendation from the Constitutional Convention, which overwhelmingly uh, supported uh, extending the franchise uh, to uh, all Irish citizens. I don't think we would take that approach uh, to the issue of marriage equality. Of course, the Constitutional Convention paved the way for that, rightly so, uh, because we all recognise that was an issue of, again, equality, rights and entitlement. Uh, we certainly didn't take it or delay it in relation to the abolition of the Shannad and a referendum uh, on that matter, which went to the public very quickly. No such uh, long fingering, no such, yeah, but we need to tease this out, we need to uh, look at this. We've had 20 years almost since the Good Friday Agreement. We don't have this issue rectified. And, and you made the point around ideology. And yes, my ideology, my ideology is Irish Republican. And Irish Republicanism is about extending rights and equality uh, to people. But this isn't a party political uh, argument. This is an argument which stretches, as a constitutional convention identified, um, right across the political spectrum, particularly uh, in the north. And of course, when parties go overseas to the diaspora, as uh, Senator uh, Coffey uh, outlined, 
They tell them, yeah, certainly, yeah, we'll go home, we'll stand up for you, we'll do what's best for you, we'll wrap the green flag around us, we'll stand up for the diaspora, we have your backs. But when you have the opportunity to do something for the diaspora, well, you've fallen at the first hurdle. I want to carry that if I can. Your time I, I, is, is I will finish on this, because in some ways, at least Fine Gael have outlined their position. They have told us um, what their position is, and we have uh, to have respect for that, because they're upfront about it. I am immeasurably disappointed uh, at the decision from Fianna Fáil not to support uh, this motion, because this motion is 100 per cent in line with their party policy. So I need to get clear in my head, Las Cajarlac, and I'll finish on this, just what exactly uh, the trajectory here has been. And, and, I, and I will offer a suggested or perhaps even just an imaginative uh, one. Did the minister phone Barry Cowan? Did Barry Cowan then phone Michal Martin? And did Michal Martin then phone the Shannon team and say, don't vote for this Sinn Féin motion? Now, if that isn't making party politics out of this issue, then I don't know what is. Okay, thanks, Senator.